In the last video, I introduced you to three basic molecular shapes predicted by VSEPR theory, linear, trigonal planar, and tetrahedral shapes. In this video, we're going to look at some variations on those shapes. So let's start with ammonia. First, pause the video and draw the Lewis structure. You would have come up with this. So how do you think this molecule would arrange its bonds? Well, it has three of them, so it might seem logical to say it's like the boron trichloride that we looked at in the last video. It's trigonal planar. But when you do crystallography on ammonia, you find out that actually the shape of its molecules is like this. So what's going on? Well, the main thing that differs between boron trichloride and ammonia is that the ammonia has a lone pair on the central atom. Could that make a difference? The answer is yes, it can. Non-bonding electrons are still negatively charged and can exert a repulsive force just like bonding electrons. So if a central atom has one or more lone pairs, those electrons will compete for space around the atom as well. In effect, they act like a phantom bond. So rather than thinking of ammonia as being based on a central atom with three bonds around it, which would make us think of a trigonal planar shape, we need to think of it as having a central atom surrounded by three bonds and a lone pair, a total of four electron groups. And this makes it more like methane with a tetrahedral geometry. But although the lone pair here is drawn like a giant balloon, it actually doesn't stick out like that. The lone pair repels the other three genuine bonds, pushing them closer together, but it doesn't take up space like the hydrogen atoms do. This means that the shape of the molecule is like a tetrahedral molecule with the top bond chopped off, so like a little pyramid. There's one more thing. If you look at the bond angles in ammonia, they're 107 degrees. Do you remember what the bond angles were in methane? An undistorted tetrahedral molecule like methane will have bond angles of 109.5 degrees. Instead, ammonia has slightly smaller bond angles, 107 degrees, which means the hydrogens have somehow been drawn closer together. What could cause this? Well, the inference that we make is that a lone pair exerts a greater repulsive force than a bonding pair. This means that if you had two lone pairs repelling each other, the force would be greater than if you had a lone pair versus a bond, as we have here, and that would be greater than the force between two bonds. So here, the three NH bonds lose out a bit and they're pushed closer together by the lone pair, which makes the bond angle smaller. So ammonia with four electron groups around the central atom is based on a tetrahedral geometry, but one of the groups is a lone pair, so it doesn't show up in the final molecular shape, which leaves us with a sort of truncated tetrahedron, which we call a trigonal pyramidal molecule. And to draw that VSEPR structure, you use a wedge and a dash to show the 3D shape and the lone pair so that you don't forget what's making it that shape in the first place. Now let's look at water. Here's the Lewis structure. And again, we ask, how can the bonds arrange themselves? Having just looked at ammonia, you may have an inkling of what I'm going to suggest here. Try pausing the video and drawing it out. Again, we have four electron groups around the central atom. Only this time, it's two bonds and two lone pairs. So the basic geometry is still tetrahedral, but two of the four tetrahedral arms are now taken up by lone pairs instead of bonds. So the true shape of the molecule is like a V. This type of molecular shape is referred to as bent or V-shaped for obvious reasons. And to draw the VSEPR structure, we simply draw it like the Lewis structure with the two hydrogens bent downwards. Now the funny thing is that this is probably the way that you've been drawing water since the beginning without really knowing why. Well, now you do. Those lone pairs repel the two OH bonds downwards, pushing them closer together and leaving the molecule in that bent uh, V shape. Now one more interesting thing is that the bond angle in this molecule is 104.5 degrees which is smaller than that in methane, which was 109.5, and smaller again than that in ammonia, which was 107. And this is the result of there being two lone pairs instead of just one. So those two single bonds are pushed even closer together because of the more repulsive nature of the lone pairs.
So to summarize what we've just looked at, methane, ammonia and water are all based on the tetrahedral geometry. But depending on how many bonds and how many lone pairs are on the central atom, the true shape of the molecule can be either tetrahedral, trigonal pyramidal or bent. Our VSEPR theory has a shorthand that allows you to summarize the bonds and lone pairs around a central atom and therefore to see more easily what the molecular shape will be. This is the AXE notation. A represents the central atom, the X's are surrounding atoms and the E's are lone pairs. So try this. Which of these three VSEPR shorthand notations on the left matches with each molecule on the right? See if you can pause the video and work it out. So methane with four bonds around the central atom and no lone pairs is denoted AX4E0. Ammonia with three bonds and one lone pair is denoted AX3E1. And water with two bonds and two lone pairs is AX2E2. So let's summarize. When you're drawing a VSEPR structure, first of all, draw, uh, draw out its Lewis structure. That's really important. Secondly, work out its shape. Count the number of electron groups, bonds, and lone pairs on the central atom. Work out the geometry that it's based on, and then the actual shape. And then finally, if you can, work out the bond angles. Start from the usual bond angle for that geometry and then account for lone pairs and double bonds which exert a greater repulsion than single bonds. Sometimes you may not be able to give an exact bond angle, but you might be able to say, I know that this bond angle is going to be, say, less than 109.5 or less than 120 degrees. As with any model, VSEPR has its limitations. So it works for a certain number of molecules. But there are also plenty of molecules for which VSAPR does not pre correctly predict their shape. But this doesn't mean that the VSAPR model is worthless. It works very well for a large number of molecules. And that's why we learn it. OK, so here's your task. Uh, I'd like you to think about the nitrite ion, NO2 minus. I want you to work out what geometry it's based on. Uh, what is the name of its molecular shape once you've taken the lone pairs into account? Uh, I want you to write its VSEPR notation and I'd like you to describe the bond angle in this iron and enter the answers into the quiz.